Cheers, guys. Epics 911, welcome to the Elitist Geek VR News for Monday, September 19th, 2016. You thought Murphy was done with me yesterday. So did I. No sooner do I upload the video, uh, the news video, to YouTube than Murphy has one last go at me. The physical media copy of Windows 10 Home Edition OEM that I purchased has this very strange activation key substance. And apparently it's Office 2, not just Windows. And it's something that people have been talking about the last couple of months. So what I'm getting at is they've coded the activation key. And keep in mind, it's still in a sealed package. They've coded the activation key with that same gray crap that those lottery tickets, the ones you buy for $1 to $20 plus, and you scratch with a coin, you try to match pairs or triples, whatever, to win money. It's that stuff. So I scratch it off, and you can probably imagine where I'm going with this, using a quarter, Canadian quarter, same quarter I've used to scratch stuff forever, and six digits missing. Because the substance where it was difficult for me to clear it ended up peeling into the cardboard. End result, a useless activation key. So I call Microsoft. They say call your retailer. It was too late for that. I talked to my retailer today. They say go back to, guess who, Microsoft. And I said, time out. That's not what we're doing here. You're going to fix this and get me a new activation key. Thankfully, they saw me eye to eye on that, supplied me with it. But still, how boneheaded of Microsoft. I don't know if any of you have come across that. Curious if you have. I just don't understand it. Like, the activation key is hidden inside cardboard. You can't shine a light through it. You can't open it. It's secure. How different is that from that scratching crap? Make the little cardboard envelope tamper-proof. Easy enough to do. But anyways, on to the news. Because <laughs> that will be rectified, hopefully, after this video to get that assembly one done. So in the news, I have talked on this channel multiple times about the need for HTC Vive and Oculus folks to get out there everywhere. Just paint the world with your HMDs. Best Buys, Walmarts, and I know Best Buys starting that already, right? But shopping malls, sporting events like tailgates for football, I don't care where, be there. And this company called InnoActive is going to make that process so much easier, even for enthusiasts to just transport the HTC Vive. So you can see here, I'm putting up a picture. It is uh, basically a suitcase inlaid with foam so that all your controllers, your HMD, they stay safe. It comes with monopods for the lighthouses. And thanks to you guys, easily my recommended and preferred way of mounting the lighthouses. Haven't uh, got the pair yet, which is a whole other Murphy story. But anyways, I digress. These come with a battery at the base for eight hours of charge. It also has a laptop that comes with it with extra battery life, a VR Ready 1060 card, and you guessed it, multiple hours of battery life. So you could set this thing up literally pretty much anywhere. So very fantastic uh, looking to sleek, protective, inactive, well done guys. No idea on the price yet, but if I find out, I will let you guys know. Because like I said, even as a unit to you know, take to work or wherever, fantastic. Next up, we have uh, more accessory talk, this time PlayStation VR accessories. And received word today that three major online retailers, namely Best Buy, uh, GameStop, and Amazon, have added to their product lines pre-orders for three different Sony PlayStation uh, VR accessories. And all three offer all three of these. So the first one is called the Power A Charge and Display Stand. And you can see that's exactly what it is. And it charges all your components for $49.99. Next up, the Collective Minds unit 
It does all of that minus the HMD for $34.99. And then the third from RDS Industries is basically a carrying case. So it allows you again to protectively transport your Vive and accessories. So very, very cool. And that one is $59.99. And again, these are pre-orders, so no word yet on when those will ship out. But as I find out, I will share with you guys. Next news story has to do with a second gen Lighthouse chip. Now, the current chips in the Lighthouse, uh, well, that the sensors in the Lighthouse pick up are those dimples. If you have an HTC Vive, you've got dimples on the controllers, you've got dimples on the front of and the sides of the HMD. Those are picked up by the Lighthouse. So this company working with Valve, they're called Triad Semiconductor, has just really gone all out to create something that's much more streamlined, better performance, requires less of those dimpled sensors. Get this, from 41 down to nine, like talk about slashing. Not only does it allow them to use less, it you know, improves the manufacturing, lowers the cost, that's the huge one. So all this R&D that's happening, whether they incorporate this into maybe a more streamlined HTC Vive next year ahead of a, you know, a full new Vive version two remains to be seen. But hopefully we see it sooner rather than later and you know have that even improve more but basically it's also available for third parties uh, through through uh, purchase to use with third party accessories again because of that tracking code becoming way more open so just kudos to uh, to HTC for all of that and uh, triad for coming up with an even better tracking chip for something that in my opinion, was already really good at, right? Tracking, that is. Next up, we have a news piece dealing with millennials. This was on Bant.com Australia, B-A-N-D-T, an article. And in it, the author states that millennials are probably not only going to benefit most from VR, they're going to contribute most. Now, some of that is a Captain Obvious statement, agreed right plus i'm sure you know gen xers uh, in my kind of age group or the baby boomers before us you know are going to say well hey you know i've still got ideas i can still benefit from this and true but the millennials are the up and comers so when we're retired these guys are still going to be plugging away at it and uh yeah, just some neat arguments and discussion points that came up around this article. You know, what it could do for schools, for example. The kind of learning that we only dreamed about could now be made possible. I remember when we learned about astronomy, and look, there was a benefit to that too, right? But we went all the way to downtown Vancouver to the planetarium, went inside and it was mind-blowing and it was an awesome experience but all of that and more like almost sensory overload can be done via virtual reality so that is one thing i'm super curious about 20 30 years from now what is going to be the offering for students in terms of virtual reality how cool would that be and kind of makes me wish just a small part even though i'm happy in the era i grew up in that that would have been there when I was a kid, right? But hey, as long as I'm here now and plan on sticking around for a while to enjoy, I'm all right with that. Next up, we have uh, Thalmic Labs. Now they created the Myo, M-Y-O. What I love about this device, and I've talked about this device kind of in passing on a previous newscast, is how non-cumbersome this thing looks, like kind of put just above the uh, sorry it was on the forearm portion so just be before your elbow on the forearm what it does is it tracks your hand gestures and 
allows for a more realistic hand size at the end of that, i.e. passes on the information for the software to create a hand that more represents the person. I'm sure you guys come across that. I certainly have. You're in a VR game and your height and scale is such, you know, you picture yourself a certain height, a certain build, then you look at your hands and they're from some svelte elf who maybe weighs 60 pounds soaking wet. So anything to improve on that in my books is just freaking awesome. So these guys have raised 120 million uh, and they're teasing the next era of computing with these funds. This is Series B funding that they got into. So some tech giants were throwing money around, guys like Intel, uh, Amazon Alexa, and a Canadian company, Fidelity Investments Canada. So 120 million, wow, right? You know, I've mentioned a lot of those stories, those R&D ones, so very exciting just to keep that momentum going. All of the stuff we're reading about now is the stuff we're gonna see one, two, three years from now. Next up, we have uh, video conferencing and virtual reality. Now, this was an interesting article uh, on WSJ.com. Interesting in that, for me, almost immediately, I could see video conferencing benefiting from augmented reality. In other words, being able to take the real you and put you in a virtual boardroom so that you can read each other's body language, right? The stuff that you may not pick up audio, you can pick up with vision or visual cues, right? And clues. So that kind of seemed like the natural fit. But we get word now that there's companies you know, that are trying to do that in virtual reality. So it remains to be seen how they're going to attack that in VR. Because like I said, some of those components are missing, like the body language thing. I'm sure they can figure something out, but just a neat article on video conferencing. And super quick anecdotal kind of little sidebar on that. I know for my company, which has out of the way locations in what's called banding three zones, which in communication speak is the worst. You're one step away from being off the grid, right? And anyways, it just makes it super challenging to find bandwidth solutions for locations like that. So being able to do video conferencing is huge. It would cut down on our travel costs, et cetera. There's so many benefits at my company, but part of it is it just doesn't work like Skype, you know, with some of the bandwidth that we have, it's just, it doesn't work. So anything that can be offloaded to VR, that's where I see a benefit. If most of that processing happens client side and it's just, you know, specific information that's being fed across the internet to reduce bandwidth, wow, potential all over it for the business world, for VR. And then the last story, just kind of a feel good. <laughs> this is about uh, the VR short film titled Henry. And they won the very first VR Emmy. So congrats to these guys. That was at the 68th annual Emmy Awards. Uh, should have a picture up here. Very cool. Applaud to these guys. And that's it for the news. As always, guys, cheers and definitely catch you on the VR flip side.